Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part we are covering why people buy insurance. We are going to answer this question. But more importantly, what is insurance? How does insurance work? This is one of my favorite chapters. This chapter is very exciting to me because this is a chapter of how I learned about the insurance markets. Let's talk about what is insurance. What is insurance? How does it work? So what happens is that let's learn some lingo. There is something called insurance premium. So this is the money you pay to the insurer, right? That's called the insurance premium. Insurer in turn promises to pay the insured if an adverse event occurs, okay? So examples, for instance, health insurance, we buy health insurance, automobile insurance, life insurance. This is if you pass away, you know, the insurance company gives money to your family so that they're not in a disadvantaged state after you, somebody dies, that's not say you. Uh, casualty and property insurance. So for instance, I do have homeowner's property insurance on my home, but I also have flood insurance, which is uh, going to be $600 of insurance premium I'm going to pay. So look at these markets, $608 billion, $160 billion. These are not even the latest numbers. So annual pre private premiums for those products totals more than $1.6 trillion. It's a little less than 10% of the United States gross domestic product. Why do individuals value insurance? Why? Because of the diminishing marginal utility. So I'm asking you to make a choice, okay? So assume that you're going to have average consumption for two years, right? You're going to get everything you need, but nothing excessive versus you're going to have one year of excessive consumption and one year of starvation. Which one would you choose? So, which one? Or another example, you're going to have regular 1,600, 2,000 calories for two days. Or you're going to eat, you're going to be stuffed one day, like six, 7,000 calories. And next day you're going to starve. Which one do you choose? So personally, and many people choose the first option. Excessive consumption doesn't increase people's utility as much as the starvation lowers it. So we are loss aversive. We don't like to we don't like to be subject to the extreme negative conditions. Okay? This is called consumption smoothing. Consumption smoothing means moving consumption from periods when it's high to periods when it's low. Let me tell you something. In the United States of America, college professors' contracts are for nine months. We are paid over nine months. Okay, we work, we are contractors for nine months. Yes, we do have tenure. Yes, we do know we're getting our jobs, you know, come September, August. However, as a professor, I get paid for nine months. What I do is I smooth my consumption. So I put away my paycheck from each paycheck for those three months that I have zero consumption or starvation months. So keep that in mind. That's called consumption smoothing. So that's why people actually save, let's say, six months of their expenses in an emergency fund in case they lose their job. So keep this in mind. Why do we do this? Because we face uncertainty. We wish to smooth our consumption over possible states of the negative states of the world for myself, right? I don't get, get paid in the summer, so I need to save. So make sure my boarding is paid, my mortgage is paid, my I have food on my table. Okay, so we do buy insurance against an adverse outcome tomorrow. Okay, We can pay even uncertain outcome never happens. Even uncertain outcome is positive. No accident. I might never have a car accident till I die, right? In return of getting a benefit of negative outcome. So basically, even if the outcome, negative outcome never happens, even flood never hits my house, I still buy the insurance just to make sure. 
So basic insurance theory basically says that we demand full insurance in order to fully smooth consumption across states of the world. When I say states of the world, it can be positive state or no accident or negative state, accident. So let's formalize this intuition, right? We're going to use expected utility model. Different states of the world will have probability of happening. Okay, so let's say P is the probability of an adverse event. Probability always takes on a value between 0, not happening, and 1. 1 means something is happening for sure. 0.5 probability means 50% probable chance of happening. P is the probability of an adverse event. Expected utility is calculated as follows. So, expected utility. Remember in the past we had utility function. Utility is a function of certain consumption. We had leisure, you know, it's, you know, function of different things. But we, we usually focus on consumption of goods and services, L for leisure, in the labor economics we learned about it. So expected utility is different because now we have probabilities. Okay, how does it work? So with probability P, this adverse event is happening. So with probability 1 minus P, the event is not happening, right? Not happening. So times the consumption with no adverse event plus so these are two different items plus sign between these two big parentheses plus probability of the adverse event happening times multiplied by utility under the consumption with adverse event so let's take a look at this example with 1% chance, very small chance, just like lottery chances are even smaller, but I did buy some lottery tickets. I know I don't buy a lot of them, but I also buy it just to test my luck. So far, my luck has been nothing. However, I do buy to help the education because lottery tickets help about 40% to our public education I just test my luck. It's it's not there. But there is a 1% chance that Sam will get into an accident that caused him 30, oh my gosh, 30,000 in damages. So 99% no damage. His consumption is solid. But 1% his consumption will go down by $30,000. That's a lot of money. So... Sam's desire to buy the policy depends on the insurance policy and the price of the insurance premium, what we call that insurance premium. Let's define something really important. It's called actuarially fair premium. Actuarially fair premium is the price needs to be equal to expected payout. So again, an actuarially fair insurance premium price is the insurance premium price that is equal to the expected payout. Okay, let's calculate the expected payout. Expected payout is what, what with 1% chance as an insurer, I'm going to pay Sam $30,000 plus with 99% chance I am paying Sam $0 because 99% chance he won't get into the accident. So the second parenthesis, 0 times 99% is 0. 1 times $30,000, 1%, I would like to correct that. So this is 0 0.01, 1% 1 times $30,000. This is going to be $300 policy. This, if, if you sell this policy to Sam, right? We're going to sell you an accident insurance and actuarially fair premium. 
Under what condition will Sam buy this insurance policy and fully insure himself? We'll talk about that too. So $300 premium is what we call actuarially fair. I said it a million times because I really want to drill it down. With actuarially fair pricing, people will want to fully insure. Never forget that. Okay, let's do the proof, okay? This is really beautiful. We're going to pick a utility function. Utility function is a square foot of the amount of consumption. Square foot of consumption will have properties that we like in a utility function indifference curve. It's going to be convex to the origin. It's going to be decreasing, diminishing marginal utility. Utility functions will not intersect each other and they're going to, as they move away from the origin, they're actually going to point out higher utility happiness levels. So let's say this is Sam's utility function, square root of whatever consumption dollar a month. So normally Sam is consuming $30,000. If, if the adverse event happens, it costs Sam $30,000. So expected utility without insurance, expected utility with no insurance. So he didn't buy the insurance. 99% chance, square foot off, he gets to enjoy his 30,000 bucks. Okay. Plus with 1% chance, Sam is going to get into accident and all his consumption will go to zero. So this is gone. 0 0.99 times square root of $30,000. If you calculate this, you're going to find approximately 171.5 levels of utility. Let's take a look at Sam's expected utility with an actuarially fair insurance of $300. So 99%, there's no accident. Sam had $30,000. However, he had this $30,000. However, he purchased an insurance, actuarially fair insurance of $300. 30,000 minus 300, 29,700 will be consumed by Sam. And with 1% chance, Sam lost all his $30,000. However, insurance company pays him $30,000 minus $300 he paid to the insurance company. That's the insurance premium. So if you calculate these, you're going to find 172.3, which is strictly greater than 171.5. Therefore, he will have incentive to buy this insurance. So utility is higher with an actuarially fair insurance. This is not the money he has right at hand. This is his happiness. So a greater number will imply a higher indifference curve. Okay. Even if insurance is expensive, right? If the price premium, insurance premium price is actuarially fair, Individuals will fully insure. Of course, if they love risk, that's another question. That's, you know, some people love to fast for six days. You know, I don't like to start, but I had a friend who uh, fasted three days with no water, no food. To me, that's crazy. So that's a different type of person. Okay. People will fully insure. Implication, okay, of this finding everything that we did the efficient market outcome is full insurance and full consumption smoothing keep this in mind let's take a look at this in full table all right thank you for your patience while i drank water so here if sam doesn't buy insurance we already talked about this and Sam is not hit by a car 99% of time. His consumption is $30,000. If Sam is hit by a car, his consumption with 1% chance, his consumption is zero. His utility is square root of $30,000 times 
percent, zero point nine nine one seventy uh three point two so sorry so one seventy three point two times ninety nine percent you get one seventy one point five I got a little confused for a second if he buys full insurance this is what we talked about if he buys full insurance not hit by a car he has consumption of twenty nine thousand seven hundred dollars if he's hit by a car twenty nine thousand seven hundred dollars again because thirty thousand he gets in all states of the world but he needs to pay $300 insurance premium. So he gets utility of 172.3. This is the square root of these numbers, $29,700. In all states, so that's what he makes. Let's talk about buying partial insurance. This is interesting. So how does partial insurance work? So if he's not hit by a car... He's buying an insurance that costs him $150 only, right? So if he's not hit by a car, 99% chance, okay, he gets to enjoy his $30,000, but he paid insurance premium of $150. So $30,000 minus $150, $29,850 square root of this guy is 172.8, 99% chance he gets this. Partial insurances, insurance companies charging him a month 50, but insurance companies only paying half of his loss. Okay, so this is, for instance, just liability insurance and car, not comprehensive collusion, everything. So let's say he got hit by a car, one person chance. So the insurance company gives him only $15,000, $150 goes to the insurance premium. So it's $14,850. Square root of this guy is 121.8. So 99% chance he's getting 172.8. 1% chance his utility, his utility will be 121.8. So if you calculate this, you're going to find 172.2, which is, again, partial insurance utility is strictly less than full insurance. Again, do not compare like the relative numbers because this is the utility. Whenever one number is greater than the another one, he is better off. So the role of risk aversion. Risk aversion is the extent to which an individual is willing to bear risk. For instance, a motorcycle rider is not the same person in terms of taking risk compared to a person who rides a really safe car with bulletproof protection? I'm just making it up. A person who rides golf carts like crazy around is not the same person as a one who will never ride those kind of vehicles. A person who skydives, skydives is not the same person as me. I hate skydiving. I will never do it. So risk-averse individuals have rapidly diminishing marginal utility of consumption. These people are more likely to demand full insurance. Individuals with any degree of risk aversion, though, will buy insurance when it's priced actuarially fairly. Okay? Even risk lovers will buy it because nobody wants to be in that state. In part three, I will see you. And that part will talk about why we have social insurance. So why don't we have just regular insurance, private insurance, everybody just insuring themselves for their retirement? Why can't government let go of the retirement market, right? Why do we have social security? Why do we have old age health insurance, Medicare? Why do we have Medicare for old people? Why can't they buy insurance from private markets? We're going to learn. Why asymmetric information requires government to step in? I'll see you in the next part. Don't forget to watch these videos in sequence. Part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for this chapter. And also hit the like button of this video because you watched it already. Just support the creator. And number 2, once you do that, it's going to push this video in front of other students who are desperate about getting a higher grade in economics and learning more about economics. Actually, I would like to thank all of you for the success of my channel. 
I just currently hit 4,000 hours. To be able to teach 4,000 hours, I would have to spend like 20 years in classroom. I am so happy to be of value to you. I have people watching these videos all over the world. It's really humbling. I'm doing it in my home. I just set up a simple studio. My dog is literally sitting with me. You gotta see him. You gotta see him. I'm gonna show you. Can you see him? Hi, Tiki. So he is literally sitting with me all this time supporting this channel. I'm here to help you folks. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next part. Asymmetric information is pretty cool.